Black Bear's Picnic, Chapter 3, Teddy Bear Friendship. It's been a day since the event at Crafty's Crafts. Ethan and his mom are sitting together in the living room, discussing what has happened. How are you feeling? I don't know. Do you feel better than yesterday? Not really. Do you need a drink or anything? Mom, please. Now's not the time to be pampering me. Why won't you tell us what happened? I don't understand why you would call the police, then refuse to answer any of the questions from the officer. I just... can't bring myself to tell them. But Ethan, you know you can tell me anything, right? If something really bad happened to your brother, then I need to know. You won't believe me. Well, now that the place is on lockdown, you won't have to go to work tomorrow. God, I hope they find Peter. While hesitating at first, Ethan gets up and hugs her. You have no idea how long I wanted that. I'm sorry. Ethan glances up at his Crafty's Crafts uniform. It was a red polo shirt and cap, with a black apron draped over it. He stared at the grinning mascot that was printed on the apron. He thought long and hard to himself. I know what to do. Ethan gets up and starts searching through drawers and cupboards around the room, throwing different items into his backpack. These items consisted of a flashlight, some batteries, a coat, some wire cutters, and a baseball bat. He has a plan. Ethan shines his flashlight through the darkness, eventually finding the Crafty Crafts building. It had loads of police tape and traffic cones sectioning the entrance off, as well as a large wire fence blocking off the alleyway to the right. Ethan took off his backpack, searched for the wire cutters, and cut an entrance in. He eventually reached the back door to the building. Damn it, I was hoping it wouldn't be locked. Ethan spots an open window to his right, which looks into the office. He pushes the window open some more, before being able to climb inside. <clears throat> the place was pitch black, with no lights left on at all. Ethan wandered through the office, shining his light onto the wall covered with posters. How old are these? There were loads of black and white posters advertising some sort of Crafty the Bear show, which dated back to the 1930s. To the right hung a framed certificate for the establishment. The sign name read Sam McCoy, while the other name appeared to be scribbled out in black marker. While intrigued at first, Ethan eventually shrugs it off and continues to the door that led into the backstage. And there laid the crafty suit, slumped on the table. Thank God, it's still here. Ethan placed down his backpack and removed the baseball bat. I'm done with this sick suit. With his bat in hand, he started bashing the suit as hard as he could. Sparks flew everywhere. Bits of plastic shot out onto the floor. Every hit was more powerful than the last, as Ethan was reminded of everything this suit had done, the people it took away, the horror it's caused. Eventually, the suit's right eye was loose and hanging out. With all his might, Ethan struck him one last time, unhinging its jaw and causing its eye to finally fall off. <sighs> Ethan took a second to process what he just did. He's a vandalizer. He just beat up an animatronic mascot suit. W what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Destroying this dumb suit isn't going to solve anything! As he started to turn around and leave, something unexpected happened. Ah! What? What the hell? Did I turn it on, or...? 
At that point, the suit shook its head with a blank expression. Wait, did you? Hang on. It tilted its head, as if listening to Ethan. Are you replying to me? Surely it must be some sort of performance program running. Ethan circles around inspecting it, the mascot's head following and twisting all the way around. No way. How are you responding to me? Oh, I'm so sorry for doing that to you. I had no idea that you... Wait. You're not some evil robot going out of your way to experiment on people, are you? No? Uh... Are you also somebody who's uploaded like my... My brother? You don't know, Peter. How did I forget about him? Do you know if there's any way to get him back? After all this questioning, the mascot thought about all the things he'd done and began to hang its head down in shame. Do you have any control over what you can do? So you really don't know anything about yourself, huh? I'm sorry, I can't understand you at all. I think I must have broken your voice box. Uh, what should I call you anyway? The suit thought for a second, before pointing to its vest. Ethan grabs the fabric and twists it over to find a small label on the underside. It reads, Crafty the Bear, prototype version. I already know your name is Crafty, but do you have some other name? Hmm, well, maybe it's best not to associate you with Crafty HQ. It might be a sensitive topic. Hmm, Alex? Sam? Maybe I shouldn't use a human name. No offense, of course, in case you are human in some way. Oh, I got one! Proto-Bear! How cool is that? It sounds a bit sci-fi, doesn't it? <laughs> hmm... Well, you're some sort of prototype, right? They're meant to be a test version of the final product. So if you're not crafty version 1, that means you must be version 0? How about that? The mascot sat and thought about the name for a second, before nodding with enthusiasm, deciding that he liked it. Version 0. I like it. I think it suits you well. I don't know how long I can stay out here before my mom starts worrying. I should probably get back home. Version Zero tilts his head in confusion. I gotta go back home. Do you not know what home means? Home is a place that keeps you protected and warm with people that love you. Well, it may not seem like that all the time, but that's the definition. For you, Crafty's Crafts would be your home. Oh, I suppose it's not, is it? Ethan quickly creeps towards the stage door and peeks his head out, listening. Damn it! Look, if we hurry, then I might be able to get you out in time. Then you can hide at my house until things die down. Are you able to stand up and walk? Well, I guess we'll both find out. Ethan grabs hold of version Zero's hand and yanks him up off the table. He stumbles for a second, but eventually finds his footing. Good job. I know it's not the best time to learn how to walk, but can you move forward? Version Zero begins to slowly and steadily stomp forwards. Could you try and be a tiny bit quieter? Shh! This way! Ethan holds him firmly by the hand and leads him through the doorway and into the office. There's no way you'll get through that window. Luckily, there's a key to the back door here. Oh! Stay still. This is the police, and this place is on lockdown. Come on. Come forward now! I think we have an intruder in the establishment. Oh, damn it, the fence! How are we gonna get you through? No, don't try and get through there. Your suit's gonna rip. With enough force, version zero eventually squeezes through the hole. Ethan follows through afterwards. This way.
We're going to have to sneak through the back of my house so we don't wake my mom up. I know, I know. I said you could stay here with me for a bit, but my mom might freak if she sees you. Trust me. Come through here. There's a flight of stairs here. Do you think you can manage them? Version Zero works his way up the stairs. One slow step at a time. Between every step, Ethan listens out for any movement in the house. Come on, you're almost there. After what felt like forever, they finally reach the top of the stairs. Version Zero accidentally stumbles and leans on the wall, causing a frame picture to fall. Damn it! Ethan, was that you? Are you okay? Quick, this way into my room. Under here. Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm all fine. You don't sound like it. Hang on, this wasn't here earlier. What's under this sheet? Don't touch that! But I've never seen it before. It's, uh, my exoskeleton, remember? Ah, I see. But wait, your robot is right there in the corner. It's my other exoskeleton. Another one? You must evade it pretty quickly. Yep, I'm getting very fast. The police rang me back while you were out. And? Nothing still. Peter is reported missing, along with two others. Uh, I'm sorry, Mom. Why won't you tell me what happened? <sighs> Maybe another time. I'm just not ready yet. Well, sleep well, Ethan. I can't tell anyone yet, Version Zero. The only way I can explain what happened is if I bring you up, but then you're going to get taken away for investigation. I don't want to do that to you. I'll figure out another way, I promise. Version Zero wanders over to Ethan's bed and slowly sits himself down. The bed creaking under his weight. He scans the room, studying it. Clothes were strewn everywhere along with various pieces of metal, plastic, and circuitry. Eventually, his eyes land on the exoskeleton in the corner of the room. Oh, that's just a project I'm working on. Funnily enough, I started working on it before I even started working at Crafty's Crafts. So, uh, how are you? Oh, right. Probably not a good question when you've just been forced to have somebody wear you and put them inside of an animatronic. I mean, how does that even work? Is it like some sort of digital consciousness transfer? <laughs> I guess that whole Pitman exoskeleton brain scanning thing wasn't so far off after all. This has been the craziest week ever. My mind can't get a break from this. It started with Chris acting weird, then the next thing you know my brother's gone, then Adam is taken away. I almost became the next victim earlier. If I didn't run away, I would probably be uploaded into some computer chip or something and plugged into a mascot suit. Maybe I would never be able to feel emotions. See my dad again. Hear my mom talk to me. Wake up in the morning to smell breakfast and... Smell. The smell that I got sometimes at Crafty's Crafts. It's some sort of burning rubber. Wait, I smell it slightly. Where's it coming from? Is it from you? Is it okay if I check? Ethan inspects version Zero's suit before opening up his chest cavity to reveal all sorts of electronics, wiring, and motors running. In the midst of it all, he spots two small copper canisters. He removes one of them and quickly smells it, causing him to become a little lightheaded. Yep, these are definitely it. What is this stuff? He twists a small valve which briefly lets some of the gas out. Ethan looks up at version zero. Do you know who made you? Is it not Chris? Ugh, I got a headache. I'm going to sort all of this tomorrow. If you're not an AI and it turns out that you were a human being before being put in that suit, then I'm sure you were an amazing, kind-hearted person. At first, version zero didn't know how to react. Eventually, he leaned forward and hugged Ethan tightly. Oh, well, uh, thank you for the hug. Version Zero lets go 
and moves himself over to the corner of his room, something down with a small thud. Oh, hopefully things start to get better. What the... What the hell was that? Ethan leaps out of bed to see what had happened. His window had smashed with all of the glass shards spread across his floor. After sitting in shock for a second, he suddenly realizes something. Wait, version zero? He's gone! His bedroom door was wide open. Bits of black fur and stitching were scattered across the upstairs hall. He followed it down the stairs and to the front door. Outside on the street, he spotted a crafty crafts van parked up. Hey, what's going on? That's when he emerged from the back of the van. I don't approve of what you did to my suit, Ethan. Give him back! You stole him from me. You don't even know what they're doing to you! Don't even bother trying to sneak back into Crafty's Crafts because he won't be there. Crafty HQ is going to keep him privately from now on. Did you even hear me? Just try your best to find him. Wait! Crafty HQ has their sights on you next. No! Come back! Ethan, what's going on? Why is your window smashed? I'll find you, Version Zero. I promise. I'll do whatever it takes. The end of Chapter 3. To be continued.